Okay, so thanks um, for the kind introduction. Tito, thank you for invitation to speak here. It's a great honor um, to speak to this particular occasion. Um, that's where I'm working on. The Comprehensive Cancer Center of Yon is a multi-professional and interdisciplinary organized tumor center connected with above 90 cooperative partners from Bodensee to Elwangen. And the goal of the Comprehensive Cancer Center is to guarantee a scientifically sound oncological supply of cancer patients in regards to prevention, diagnosis, primary treatment and rehabilitation. Multidisciplinary tumor board as well as onboard oncological supply units and oncological outpatient clinics serve in cooperation with the cancer and Center for Psycho-Oncology and what I'm very happy and proud about since about three years also consultation hour in integrative medicine are available in um, cooperation with gynae oncology and gastro-oncology as a pilot project. Good clinical practice um, studies of all disciplines are being hosted in close coordination with the clinical trial center. Based on the results of scientific studies, evidence-based practice relevant guidelines are being made available to nearly all tumor entities. Thereby an evidence-based cancer care is warranted for our patients. It's amazing that some patients with cancer illness come to the university hospital just because next to the modern high technology medicine, also an integrative approach is offered, which incorporates holism in a cooperative collective. Yes, some of our patients do resolutely wish for this kind of bridging integration. What are the characteristics of the consultation hour um, for integrative medicine or integrative oncology. Based on the tumor board resolution, a patient-centered history is mandatory, including segments of lifestyle, such as strength, power, sleeping behavior, nutrition and movement habits, as well as mindfulness practice and biographic queries and altogether intend to pick up the patient needs as much as appropriate. Regarding naturopathic medication, the missile 2 therapy is most important. As we connect the methods of modern university medicine with integrative medicine, many patients um, will be liberated from inner strife. The inner strife between high tech medicine and the desire to be treated as a whole person. In this way, we are increasingly fulfilling the autonomy, self-determination and value of our patient. Yes, the patient value. And furthermore, for the attending physicians, for us, it can be a relief to know that we are fulfilling further needs of our patients through the cooperation of our specialized expertise. And as we experienced through cooperative collaboration, a growing appreciation for one another can develop. Let's see how does this relate to evidence-based medicine. Regarding the evidence hierarchy of evidence-based medicine, the highest level of evidence is attributed to meta-analysis from randomized clinical trials. 
while mainly in regard to external evidence. As a result, to this historical perspective, medical empiricism as well as fundamental pathophysiological consideration may not be sufficiently valued. Nonetheless, we know that barely more than 8 to 10 or 12 percent of guidelines are evidence-based on level one. However, no study result may ever 100 percent verify predictions. Individual outcomes vary. As David Sackett, uh, the founder of evidence-based medicine, said in 1996, it is the expertise, the clinical expertise, that decides whether the external evidence applies to the individual patient at all, and if so, how it should be integrated into a clinical decision. <clears throat> and the big challenge, maybe it's already important as we do already, the individualization of general knowledge is already applied in our multidisciplinary tumor board. Now, I would like to present you some studies which may underline the value of non-randomized clinical trials and pathophysiological consideration, including patient values for the benefits of the treatment of our patients. This study from Palish shows the influence of the quality and duration of sleep on the outcome of breast cancer patients. And it's taking into account um, a score in regarding to sleep duration and quality. And in this study, patients with a reasonable score showed a survival period of 80 months when the score was above 85%. That says that the duration and quality of sleep was quite good. And compared to patients which were below, they survived only 32 months. This corresponds to an increased survival of about five years. And this is an efficacy that has never been able to be proven or could ever be reached by any chemotherapeutic agent or other medicine. And of course, you may not, may not randomize natural or conditional sleep behavior. Next study from Lutgendorf shows the connection between low social support and in highly depressed patients and the gene profiling transcription pattern, that is the impact on the gene regulation. Low social support and high depression show a considerable high regulation on cancer gene growth regulation factors, extracellular matrix, proteosis, chem chemokines, receptors, etc. So that here too, a clear connection between mental and spiritual experience and function functionality down to the genes can be traced. And again, you may not randomize social support. The last study I want to present you is done by Dean Ornish and colleagues in, um, published in 2008 and 12. We examined the cause of prostate cancer patients by applying a lifestyle intervention which compromised of a three-day residential retreat and to modify the lifestyle of the patient through movement, a low-fat diet, stress management, that means roughly 60 um, minutes per day exercise, like meditation or something like that, as well as a group um, support. 
Consequent to the intervention, a significant change in regards to weight, blood pressure, and blood lipids could be seen. And even more impressive, in gene profiling, pro-cancer routine genes turned out significantly downregulated, while anti-cancer genes were upregulated. What you can see in the green color and on the microarray. Um, in follow-up analysis, four years later, Ornish was able to show that the telomerase length also changed towards a life extension. Let's come back to evidence-based medicine. The patient value, evidence-based medicine as forerunner for inductive medicine, trailblazer for inductive medicine. With the increase of the patient's awareness and desire regarding the change in lifestyle, the lack of external evidence will be unavoidable. Therefore, individualization process between all three pillars of evidence-based medicine is mandatory. In particular, the inclusion of internal evidence that is medical expertise. It remains challenging how to objectify internal evidence, and I guess the next speaker, Dr. Breitkreutz, will give an input to that when he is presenting the competence network in Ecclesiastes Medicine in Baden-Württemberg. As we've seen, patients' lifestyle and quality of life has extreme consequences on survival outcome, down to the level of gene expression. So here we have a fascinating, exciting, pulsating new field of scientific research in integrative medicine is emerging. Therefore, we founded a clinical consortium and scientific consortium between KIM, the Competence Network Integrative Medicine in Baden-Württemberg, and the ATSKIM, the Academic Research Center for Complementary Medicine in integrative medicine in Baden-Württemberg, including four, all four university hospitals of Baden-Württemberg, which is just initiated in 2020 to be pilot funded by the Ministry of Education and Health. In conclusion, Patients want to share scientific progress of modern medicine while being treated as a whole person, including naturopathy. That belongs to patient values. And as well, belonging to patient values, and this is fear what um, Dr. Debus already talked about, um, the ego, the I, the spiritual sphere, maybe. Patients' lifestyle and quality of life has extreme consequences on survival outcome, as we say, down to the level of gene expression. Well, so this huge potential for clinical and research growth must receive political support in order to liberalize the funds needed for not just Baden-Württemberg, but all of Europe. Thank you for your attention.